My brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have gone through a long series about the hereafter. We've spoken about what is in store for all of Allah's creation after death. We have finished all that series and now we are talking about what the living can do to benefit the dead. And we've already had two classes on that and today inshallah will be the final one on that. I'm going to be delivering some advice and encouragement for us who are the living to remember death and that it's actually a good thing to remember death and what we as living can benefit ourselves and benefit the dead people how we can do that and I'm sure that each one of us may have a friend or a relative who has passed away sometime in their life and they wondered what can they do and they felt helpless about it first of all I would like to repeat and remind everyone that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ala inni قَدْ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ الْقُبُورِ أَلَا فَزُورُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُكُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ Behold everyone, he said. Before, in the earlier days, I prevented you from going to the graveyards. Now, you should go. For it reminds you of the hereafter. Why before he prevented, Allah knows what the circumstances were. But finally, the Prophet ﷺ did say, I encourage you to visit the graves for they remind you of the hereafter. What is Rasul Sallallahu telling us? He's, he's trying his best to inform us. Rasul Sallallahu does the best. But to get through to us until the end of time that we are not living here for eternity and that we, did not, we were not created for no reason. We have been created for a reason. And when you look around you, the magnificence of creation makes you come to one conclusion, that this did not come from nothing. And that whoever made it has made it for a reason and a cause. And we have the prophets and the messengers who informed us. We have the Quran, which tells us to make our hearts firm. And our messenger وسلم, is telling us Always keep in mind that you are going to visit or you are going to end up in your real homes and they are the graves. In another hadith, he used to say in what means Pass by the graveyards, give it a visit and know that it will one day be homes for you. Just as those before you were roaming the earth and now they are living in those graves. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said The grave can either be a garden from the gardens of paradise for the person if they had succeeded in this life in obeying Allah asking for forgiveness from sins which they have done, trying to mend their ways. Or a pit from the pits of hellfire for those who knew Allah and denied Him, rejected Him, turned away from Him, forgot Him so He forgot them. So we have to prepare for that. And I remind you of the man who came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, when will the world end? And he replied, in the meaning, don't ask about that. He said, What have you prepared for that moment when it will come to an end? Meaning, what have you prepared for your life when it comes to an end? What life? The life after here. For the world ending is just the same as one single life ending. What do I mean by that? To you and me, as an individual, if the whole world ends, 
and I die, it's the same thing as me getting sick and dying now or dying of some other reason. It's the same end, whether the world ends or doesn't end. The end of each individual is their world ending. Rasul said, Man mata faqad qamat qiyamatu. Whoever dies, then their last hour has come. Their world has ended. We are reminded because we are still living and death hasn't come to you and me yet. And we still have a chance to change. We still have a chance to repent. We still have a chance to improve if we are already good, inshallah. But the wise person is the one who never takes pride in their own good actions and says, I am a virtuous person. I am a God-fearing person. Allah says in the Quran, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Never praise yourselves in piety. Say, I am the pious one. هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى He, Allah, knows truly who is pious and who is not. So a person should always be a balance. A balance, you don't know whether you have succeeded and at the same time, you don't give up thinking that you are surely going to be miserable. But rather, we always hope for the mercy of Allah and His forgiveness. And at the same time, we always fear that we might not be successful, somewhere in between. So that when we see the haram, we avoid it because we're afraid. And when we see the good deeds, we take it as an opportunity. And among those good opportunities is what we can offer for the Muslims, the believers who have died. At the same time, non-believers who die, what can we offer to their family in the form of showing them what Islam, what Islam has made of you in relation to compassion and mercy to the family? But we're getting to that, insha'Allah, in a bit. We finished off last week about the benefit that a living person can offer the dead when they come to pray the Janazah prayer. The Janazah prayer is that special type of prayer that we offer to the person who has died as the final farewell and also a supplication to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give Him mercy or her mercy and forgiveness and to look after them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be a community, a unity. And at the same time, Allah wants each and every one of us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by us visiting the graves, visiting the sick, going to pray a janazah and making dua for the deceased makes you as an individual reflect upon yourself. It makes you ponder upon yourself. There are so many distractions in this world, brothers and sisters. So many distractions, wallahi. Allah says, do not let this world deceive you. فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ Don't let this worldly life deceive you. It can easily do so. And do not try, try to think that you can deceive Allah. So we need to remind ourselves all the time. And Allah knows we forget from time to time. This is why He brought death and life in our lives. He brought hardships at times and sicknesses at times and He brought happiness at times and celebrations at other times. In order to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times of happiness and remember Him and also to remember Allah and reflect upon our reason why we are here when hardships and death happen. So either way you are remembering Allah but in different emotions and in different feelings. And these my dear brothers and sisters, Wallahi, they serve the heart very well. The body needs its food and its drink and the soul, the heart inside here. I don't mean the, the organ that pumps the blood. I'm talking about the heart, meaning something inside of you, you in here. The unexplainable in you. It makes you spiritual with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the feelings that are inside of you. It needs its medicine. It needs its food as well. It needs its nourishment. And its nourishment is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you connect it with Allah, you say to yourself, oh, I have someone there who I can look up to and rely upon and complain to and wish from. He is Allah, the creator, the most powerful, the king of all. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the encouraging, encouraging us to go to a janazah, a funeral prayer. Man shahida janazatan hatta yusalla alayha falahu qiratun wa man shahidaha hatta tadudfana falahu qiratan which means whoever goes to a janazah prayer and prays it then they will have the reward equal to a qirat. What is a qirat? We'll explain in a minute. He said, and whoever also follows it up, when you pray the janazah and then you go to the funeral, to the graveyard, to witness its burial, then they will have double the qirat. And it was asked, O Messenger of God, what is a qirat? What is its value that you are mentioning? And he said, it is the size of the mountain of uh, it is the size of two great mountains. So imagine now, if somebody said to you, I will give you, when you go to Janazah prayer, a mountain of gold. Would anyone say no? Allahu Akbar would leave everything in this world, everything. We will struggle to it. Even if we were on our deathbed, we will, on our knees, on our, we will slither there, on our stomachs if we have to and we can't walk. We will leave everything for a mountain of gold. People do that for gambling. And you know what? The sad thing is that they keep losing every time. And what happens is they keep on going more and more and they get motivated more and more. What, what's this motivation? It's not a motivation. It's a sickness, an addiction. And they go more and more hoping for that day when they will win the lottery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, if you go to the Janazah prayer, I am telling you, if you believe, if you believe in me, I will give you a mountain of rewards like, like none has ever imagined. It's not gold that you can, because what's gold? Gold because you can buy and sell things. You can buy things, you can have things. On the day of judgment, the rewards are something different. Don't ask me what they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all goodness. You don't want to miss out on it. He says, we'll have a mountain of a great mountain of gold. So a great mountain of reward. And if you follow it and witness the burial of it, you will have two mountains of reward, great mountains from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's for people who really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. It's not for the weak hearted, the ones who have doubts. I'm talking to the people who, are really, who really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will have double that reward. This is because there is no greater reminder than death. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this in many hadiths and in different narrations. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu learnt from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these narrations. And he said, he used to always say, Kafa bil mawti wa'idha. Wallahi death is sufficient enough to remind anyone. It is the greatest reminder. He said, Kafa bil mawti wa'idha. Enough is death as a reminder. There's no greater reminder than that. Wallahi. And the Prophet ﷺ called it Hadimul Ladhat, the destructor of all desires. The destructor of all desires. The greatest truth. Allah says in the Quran, and now death has come to you in truth. That is what you were running away from. Death is the ultimate truth. So it reminds us. And when we go to those graveyards, when we go to the janazah, and we witness this with our eyes, Wallahi, only the hardest heart will not be moved. The greatest reward lies in a person who hears about someone who has passed away and you actually leave your home for that intention to go and witness and pray the prayer and go to the graveyard to witness the burial. Those who are able to do so. Those who are unable to do so, but every time they are able, they do go. And at times when you are unable to do so, but you had the intention to do so, Allah will give you the reward as though you did so. This is related in the hadith of Prophet ﷺ, that whoever wants, whoever usually does something of good, and then at time, at a time he or she was unable to do it, Allah will write it as though they did it. There is even a reward in intending to do something and then you just didn't do it. 
there is a hasana for intending to do a good because that in itself also helps the heart in cleaning it and getting it closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there is a note here. At the time of the burial, Rasul sallam has forbidden the women from following the funeral to the actual graveyard. And the Prophet ﷺ prevented the women for a reason. There are many authentic sources that prove this. And there are many reasons that we can learn from them. Among those reasons are the following. Since a woman has aura, more aura to be shown of her body, therefore, obviously she's more conservative than the man, then there are possibilities probabilities of a woman's aura being shown at the graveyard at a time of intense moments, especially if it's a relative or a close person to her. At the same time, her emotional well-being is very important. Generally speaking, the mothers and the sisters and the daughters, their emotion at those moments need to be looked after. And therefore, it is out of the mercy of Allah that at the time of that death, the following to the burial is not permitted. There are several other reasons. However, we stick to what Allah and His Messenger have advised us. And since the men are responsible in carrying it out, then they are the ones to do so. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when a person is taken to be buried, it is from the Sunnah of our Prophet wasallam that whenever he took somebody to be buried, he would dig the ground or the ground would be dug. And Rasul used to say, make the grave wide. Make the grave wide and make it enough for the person's body to be buried with ease. Ihfiru wa awsi'u wa ammiqu. Prophet Sallallahu said this in the Sahih Hadith. Dig and make it wide and make it deep enough. So don't make it shallow. When a person is buried and being placed in their grave, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Say Bismillah wa ala millati Rasulillah in the name of Allah and in accordance with the tradition of the Messenger of Allah. You say Bismillah in the name of Allah because it is Allah who gave the life and it is Allah who takes the life. What He has given, He will take. This is the way Allah has created this world. The hereafter there is no more death. For it is the world of reward or the, reward or the world of the consequence. This is the world of the test, of the examination. So Allah will give you your opportunity and then he, there is an end for it. There is an expiry date. So in the name of Allah, we slaughter our, our, our animals and eat it. In the name of Allah, we eat our food. In the name of Allah, we drink our food. In the name of Allah, we get dressed because everything came from Allah. And in the name of Allah, we bury our dead. And we say, Alhamdulillah, in the name of Allah, when we finish our food, when we finish what we are doing, and in the name of Allah, we finish our burial. A person is buried on their right side. And their, right, and their body is facing towards the Qibla. So the, right, the front of the body faces towards the Qibla according to the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And underneath his head it is a Sunnah to place, or her head, to place a little bit of clay from the earth or a little bit of rock. For we said last week that a Muslim must honor the body of the dead Muslim just like they honor them when they are alive. You must treat them in the same way. They are covered with a bit of rock or whatever on top of their body and the soil is placed, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah says in the Quran, فَمِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى It is from the soil that we have created you and to it we will return you and from it we will resurrect you once again. Now we come to what else a person can offer after you have put the soil on top of the person. There are many different traditions that people have carried on over the years and some of them are wrong and some of them are right. 
Some of the wrong things people are doing are the ones that do not have any source authentic, authenticated from the Prophet Some of them begin to stand around in a certain style and they recite together certain recitals and they do not know where they got these recitals from. We stick to what our Prophet ﷺ taught us. For if you want to benefit the dead, then it is the best way is to know how Allah and His Messenger have taught us to benefit the dead. For they have gone to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, for example, used to say, after putting the soil on top of the dead person, ادعو لأخيكم Supplicate for your brother or your sister. وَسَلُوا لَهُ التثبيت. And ask Allah, for example, Ask Allah to make him or her firm. For right now, he is being questioned. As soon as the soil is placed on top of the dead person, they are questioned. The angels to Munkar wa Nakir come to ask them the questions that, you, that we've already spoken about. What do we do in, while we are living? We ask Allah to make them firm. As for the believers, Allah says in the Quran, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Those of you who believe in Allah and practice upon their belief, Allah will make their hearts firm in this life when they are living, so they don't lose their way. And He will make their hearts firm in the grave when the angels come to us and they're able to respond. So in, for, in relation to us who are living, we ask Allah, Oh Allah, make our brother or our sister firm in their answering to the angels. And this is connecting our hearts and our souls together in this dua and increasing and developing our spirituality. Another hadith that Rasulullah used to say, Istaghfiru li akhikum wa salu lahu tathbeet. Ask Allah for forgiveness for your brother and ask Allah to make him or her firm. Forgiveness. What is better to ask for a dead person? than for Allah to forgive them. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I ask you a question. Who among us here guarantees right now and is confident enough to stand up and say by Allah's name that they have never done a sin in their life? By Allah's name, you have never made a mistake in your life. By Allah's name, you have never sinned while knowing in your life. None of us can. If you do say so you are lying, you are lying to yourself, you are lying to the people, and you are lying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah knows it. For it is out of the nature in which Allah has created us, in that He created us in the nature that we will make mistakes. We err. We move away. But for a believer, it is through these mistakes that we learn to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you feel? How do you feel? Isn't your iman doubled? Tripled? When you regret and you cry and you admit your sin, you feel even closer to Allah than before. This is why seeking forgiveness from Allah for us and for the dead are among the best virtues and the best good acts that anyone can do. Our Rasul Sallallahu used to say, for example, Tuba liman wajada fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Good news to the one who on the day of judgment will open their record and they will find in their records Many instances in their lives that they have sought forgiveness from their Lord. Astaghfirullah, from their heart. And now you are seeking forgiveness for your dead brother or sister in Islam. Yes, your dua, seeking forgiveness for the person who has died, reaches the person, Allah will forgive them on your behalf. Now Allah knows how much this person is to be forgiven. Allah knows that you will seek forgiveness for them. But this benefit is for us. This benefit is for the living. And at the same time, Allah out of His mercy and compassion has made it also that the brothers and the sisters are for each other. Even after their death? Yes, even after their death. A person may ask when their father has died or their mother has died or if brother or a sister or their child has died or a relative. What is it that you yearn for? You say to yourself, if I can have only five more minutes, just five more minutes to see my father or mother again. Five more minutes to see my child again, just to say how much I love them. Isn't that right? It's the nature of the human. Five more minutes, two more minutes, just to come back. I just want to look at them one more time. Say one word to them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, that will never happen. Allah says, Allah will never delay a single soul when its time has come. However, look what He gives us. 
you have the opportunity to supplicate for them and it will reach them. It will reach them like a gift. And in fact, in one of the, one of the hadiths narrated in Sunan Ahmad, it says that when a person has died, they suddenly find gifts of rewards coming to them and their, and their levels are being raised. And they say, where is this from, my Lord? For my deeds have ended me here. Where am I getting more deeds from? Why is my level rising? And it will be said to him or her, you have a righteous child that is still supplicating for you. You have a righteous child that is still supplicating for you. Or you have a righteous child who is donating on your behalf. Or someone is. You know the hadith that we mentioned last week. That the rewards that keep going for the dead person. Ongoing charity, ongoing knowledge, or righteous child that is supplicating for you. This is out of the mercy and compassion of Allah. It is not the end. You can keep going, alhamdulillah. I was at a funeral the other day. And the parents or the, the, uh, the children asked me, What can I do for my father? And this is what we said you can do. Supplicate for them. Ask for dua for them, forgiveness, mercy. Oh Allah, make their grave a garden from the gardens of paradise. Oh Allah, give them mercy from your mercy. Oh Allah, be generous to them. Oh Allah, be compassionate towards them. Oh Allah, my father has taught me this. I ask you to reward him for what he has taught me. There are many good words you can say. And Allah will respond to them. ta'ala. Allah loves this when people supplicate for them. And there are also angels, as we said last week, who say Ameen to the supplication of a Muslim for another Muslim. When you supplicate for another Muslim, in the Sahih Hadith it says that there is an angel standing there saying, وَلَكَ مِثْلُهُ وَلَكَ مِثْلُهُ وَلَكَ مِثْلُ ذَلِكَ وَلَكَ مِثْلُ ذَلِكَ And for you, we ask God for the same thing. And for you, we ask Allah for the same thing that you are asking for your brother or sister. So supplicate for the dead and ask Allah for forgiveness for them, my dear brothers and sisters, for it is through the forgiveness that people rise and enter paradise. And do you remember, recall a few weeks ago, we mentioned when the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala occurs in Jannah for the believers, when you see Allah finally. You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there isn't a person, a Muslim, a believer in Jannah except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to them, him or her alone, privately. No one else can hear this. And among the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to this servant in Jannah, privately, my servant, do you remember when you did such a thing and such a thing of a sin in secret? No one else knew about it except you and I. And he will say, yes, my Lord. Have you not forgiven me? And Allah will say, it is because of my forgiveness you have entered my kingdom, my, my, my Jannah. So Allah reminds, finally, what's the, among the first things, the forgiveness. Allah loves it when His servant returns back. And you seek forgiveness from your Lord. In another hadith al-Qudsi, Allah says, He becomes so happy when a person seeks forgiveness from Him, like a person who is in the middle of the desert, all he has of transport is a camel, one camel. So he goes to sleep and when he awakes in the middle of the desert, his camel has run away. And he says, that's it. He gives in all hope and he says, I'm going to die. So he sits under a tree and waits for his death to come. There's no hope. And then when he awakes again, he finds that his camel is back. Because of his happiness and excitement, he accidentally says, Oh my Lord, you are my slave and I am your God. Opposite. Allah says he is more excited, more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yafrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happier, rejoices more than that man, than a person than that man when a person comes for forgiveness from his Lord to renew the contract with him. Ali Ma'abdi anna lahu Rabban Yaghfir. My my servant knew that he has a Lord that will forgive him. And he has come to me. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these are the things, some of the things that we can do when people have died. And as you are walking away, supplicate. There are people who say you should recite Quran at the graveyard or recite Al-Fatiha when you approach the graves. This, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I could not find any authentic sources or narrations in the whole of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, where this was practiced by the Prophet ﷺ himself or his companions or the Tabi'een or the Atba'at Tabi'een in a way where it was confirmed. 
or affirmed by others. Al-Quran is excellent to be recited. And there are numerous hadiths about the Prophet ﷺ saying, read the Quran, read it for it is a witness for you on the day of judgment. However, everything has its correct position and its right place and its right aim. As for the Quran, Rasul ﷺ, we mentioned the hadith last week, which probably also could be weak, but even if it was authentic, the meaning is recite Yasin while, while your person is dying. While the person is dying, meaning at their extreme sickness, they are still alive and you, there is no hope of their living. It means recite Yasin while they are dying so they can hear it. But once they have died, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the best thing to do and the Prophet ﷺ did is make dua. And we know of the hadith of Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ went and supplicated for the people, the shuhada, the martyrs of Badr and, and others. And in Al Baqiyah, and Prophet ﷺ made dua, long dua for them. Abu Hurairah narrates this. And among the things he used to say are the following, and we should practice this. Assalamu alaikum, this is one of the ways, one of the hadiths. Assalamu alaikum dara qawmin mu'minin. Peace be upon you, the home of believing people. أنتم السابقون ونحن اللاحقون أنتم السابقون ونحن إن شاء الله بكم لاحقون In other narrations Peace be upon you, home of believing people You have beaten us to the afterlife and we are بإذن الله إن شاء الله following you to the rewards Meaning you have beaten us to the good rewards and we are following you to those good rewards إن شاء الله إنا نبشركم بالجنة We give you good news of paradise And then he would make dua of forgiveness and mercy and so on for him so these are the authentic hadiths of Prophet ﷺ among them. You will not find recitations of the Qur'an around their grave, even though recitation of the Qur'an is an extraordinary virtue. But not in this position, for it is not a Rasul ﷺ's way. Furthermore, I want you to analyze with me. If let's say, and I was one of them, where you know my parents taught me at a young age, before we knew, that whenever you pass the grave, I'd recite Surah Al-Fatiha. When we analyze what the Surah Al-Fatiha is actually saying, you will find that actually none of it goes to the dead. In fact, it's all for yourself. What is it? Praise be to Allah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim and so on. And then finally you come to the dua. What is the dua? You finally come to the clux of the whole, of the whole Surah and you say, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. The dead person can no longer be guided. The days of his guidance, are either he's guided or not, he's dead. Now you are supplicating for yourself, for the living. So even if Al-Fatiha, you wanted to recite it, it will not serve the purpose for the dead, rather it serves the purpose for the living. As you can see in the meaning. Therefore I advise my younger brothers and sisters here, and to the parents, to teach their children not only the recitation of the Qur'an, like a, just a recital in a tradition, but rather also to understand the meaning of what they are reciting. That's why the Qur'an was sent to understand its meaning. Once we left the meaning and the understanding of the Qur'an, this is when wrong practices began to creep into our lives, into our deen. This deen is pure, my brothers and sisters. It should, it's pure. Rasul said, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْمَحَجَّةِ الْبَيْضَاءِ لَيْلُهَا كَنَهَارِهَا لَا يَزِيغُ عَنْهَا إِلَّا هالك. I have left you on the clear white page. Its night is as clear as its day. No one will be led astray off it except one who is soon to destruction, the ignorant, the one who doesn't seek the knowledge, the one who doesn't investigate. Investigate. A Muslim is not a blind follower of anyone except Allah. We investigate our sources. Unless in case we fall into sin, we ask Allah to forgive us. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the dua is what reaches the dead. Among the things which the Prophet ﷺ warned us from doing, which do not benefit the dead as well, is to make the grave places, even if they are believers or prophets, as places of worship. For example, a person says, I am going to go to the graveyard of this so-called righteous person who I knew, and I'm going to supplicate to my Lord there. You can supplicate to your Lord anywhere. The whole of the earth is a masjid for Allah. 
Why is it special only at that grave? Some people they say, if I go to this virtuous grave, my dua will be accepted more. This, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is shirk. You have made partners with Allah. How? By giving qualities to that dead person that do not exist to him or her while they are dead, that only belong to Allah. Worship is only to Allah and should be directed only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Recall and remember how shirk began of the worship of idols. They began at the time of Nuh, before Nuh alayhi salam, how when they started to recall and remember these five particular righteous, virtuous people, Wad, Suwa, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasra. They were good people. They died and people began to worship at their graves until finally they built monuments and they began to worship those idols. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to say, Allahi ala al-Yahud wa nasara May Allah curse the Jews and the Christians who did this. اتَّخَذُوا قُبُورَ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ masajid. They took the graves of their prophets as mosques, places of worship. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, we mentioned last week, it is forbidden to raise the graves up high like buildings. And the Prophet ﷺ informed Ali radiallahu anhu said, do not leave a grave up high except that you have made it level with the earth. And we mentioned last week, go and look at the righteous people, the companions graves in Medina and Mecca and you will see how their graves are. Flat with the ground. I guarantee that you will not even know which one is Hamza radiallahu anhu's grave from the others, from Mus'ab ibn Umayr's. You won't know because it's a humble and virtuous thing. There is no need to actually pinpoint the grave to go there and do something special. And Allahu A'lam, it's for a good reason that they were hidden from us because of the many problems and things that Muslims have been getting up to in importing false traditions from Hinduism and from Buddhism and from Greek theology and, and Christianity and Judaism. Wallahi, when Muslims spread throughout the world, because of ignorance, some of them brought back false traditions from other religions. Our religion is pure, alhamdulillah. Our Rasul Sallallahu forbid us from sitting on graves or standing on graves because out of respect and honor for the dead as well. In relation to what we should do after to the family, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised us to visit the family of the deceased. This is the azat now. Paying condolences. How is a Muslim pay condolences? In this, there is also a great reward. Remember, we are all in the remembrance of death now. How do we pay condolences to the dead? Among the virtuous things and the best things you can say to the family of the deceased is the following. Any, any of these, I'll just give you a few examples. Rasul taught us these words. May Allah gratify your rewards. Meaning, you are reminding them of patience. May Allah gratify your reward for being patient. May Allah reward you for your patience. May Allah help you in your struggle. When you say, may Allah gratify your rewards, you are saying, may Allah give you the strength for patience and reward you for it. In another narration, Rasul tells us to say the following words, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we have belong and we have always belonged and to Him we will return. And to say to them, lillahi ma a'ta wa lillahi ma akhath. Remind them, to Allah belongs what He has given and to Allah belongs what he has taken. Why? In that moment, my dear brothers and sisters, we all need a reminder. Any one of us, when a beloved has passed away, we need people to remind us because our emotions are going to take over. So we need Muslims. This is how we help each other. Allah says, help each other on that which is good and piety. Do not assist each other on oppression and wrong and disobedience to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Among the things you can say are good words, any good words that comfort them. You must be positive. For example, your sorrow is my sorrow and your happiness is my happiness. Your grief is my grief. We share with you. Among the things physically that you can do other than the sayings is the following. Help the family in preparing food for them, in washing their clothing for them, in coming and cleaning their house for them. Wallahi, it's very strange how we have sought, I don't know about your tradition, I, many I've got people from different cultures here, mashallah, from different nationalities. But in my nationality, the, uh, the Lebanese nationality, they do bizarre things when it comes to what they call ta'zia, condolences. It is upon the family of the deceased to prepare food for those who visit them. 
They burden them also with sweets. They have to bring the famous sweet is kinefa, you know, kinefa, beautiful. It's an expensive sweet. I think it's about $24 a kilo. The family of the deceased has to go out and buy it now. Allahu Akbar, it's what you do on Eid. They, we force them to do this at that. And if they don't do it, we start talking about them. Look, visitors, they came to pay in condolence and they don't even feed them. Visitors, they came to pay in condolences and they don't give them sweets. Allahu Akbar, it should be the opposite. Allahu Akbar. We should be saying, look, how can I go and pay him condolences when I'm forced, I'm putting a burden upon them, upon the burden that they already have. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the family of Ja'far died, families, members of Al Ja'far, he used to say to them, Isna'u li ali Ja'far ta'aman faqad ja'ahum ma yushghiluhum. He used to say to them, make food for the family of Ja'far, for now there is something come to them that has made them too busy to think about food or to prepare the meals. Make meals for them and for the people who visit them. Wallahi ya ikhwan, I visited in janazas and, and, and I've gone to janazas and gone to ta'zis, condolences where I've seen the most virtuous of people. Wallah, these are the people. You don't know them much. They're not popular. They're not famous. They're probably not, you know, extremely knowledgeable. They're not figures in the community. But what do you see them doing from behind the scenes? They are the backbone of our community. They are the ones who come in silently and secretly from their car holding bags. Bags of what? Of food, of sweets, of drinks. From their pocket they spend. Wallahi, this is the, one of the greatest virtues. Allahu Akbar. They come inside secretly, clean up, and then they leave. Wallahi, I don't even see any of them sit for, for a very long time. Five minutes, ten minutes maybe. Maximum. Those who stay, they're serving. They're serving. So we come, we stay a little bit and we leave. Unless you've got something good to say, unless you have something reminder to say, you can give a little lecture to help the hearts. Yes, stay to serve, to help, to clean. Three, four days, five days, one week, three weeks. There is another tradition. Some people think that you're only allowed to help them for three days. You're not allowed to visit them after the third day because they think of the hadith of Prophet ﷺ which says, La huzna akthar min thalath. There is no sadness more than three days. People have misunderstood this hadith. What the Prophet ﷺ is telling us here, if this hadith is authentic, that we shouldn't, we should try to get on with our lives as quick as possible. The decree of Allah has befallen. There are now children you have to look after. There's family you have to look after. There's rewards still to, to gain. Don't give up on life. Don't give up now. Move on. Supplicate and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Some people they say the ta'ziyah ends on the third day. You come to visit them on the fourth day, they're upset with you. No, you can make the ta'ziyah even after a week, after a year, if you're unable. But obviously it is better for the Muslim to be quick, hasten, to pay condolences to the family immediately. And this is out of love and compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي رَسُولَ صَلَى tells us, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ الْوَاحِدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَ مِنْهُ عُضْوًا دَعَى إِلَيْهِ سَائِرُ جَسَدِهِ بِالسَّهَرِ وَالْحُمَّةِ The example. Rasul says, the example of the believers in their treatment towards one another in compassion and mercy is like one body. If one part of the body is in pain, the rest of the body complains in the night by staying up, unable to sleep and with fever. This is how we are towards one another, brothers and sisters in Islam. Isna'u li'ali ja'fara ta'aman Prepare for the family of Ja'far food. They are now busy with something out of their hands. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, among the worst things a Muslim can do towards the dead person is that after they have died, you know of something bad about them that they used to do in their former life that was a secret and does not harm anyone but themselves. And you go and mention it to people. This person, you're making dua for them. I know they used to do this. They used to do that. Unless it was something that would harm the community after his death, we are forbidden from mentioning it, my dear brothers and sisters. According to the Sahih Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where he tells us, when a person passes away, in the meaning of the Hadith, when a person passes away, try and mention the positive things about them. Why not the negative? Because... If they had done wrong things, then they are already they are already in a burden. So do not burden them more. They are already in a burden. They already know. And if the dead person was able to come back out to the living, my dear brothers and sisters, 
they will change their life around and they would advise you something else. Allah says in the Quran, إِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَرَأَوُا الْعَذَابَ وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً فَنَتَبَرَّأُ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُوا مِنَّا After death, those who used to follow the wrongdoers those who used to follow the wrongdoers, what will happen to them? Their leaders, meaning the people they used to follow, they will say, we are innocent from you. Don't blame us. And when they see the torment, the ones who followed them, they will say, we wish if we were to be given another life to return back so that we today can be innocent from them the same way they bet innocent from us. But it's too late. They wish they can return to mend their lives. So saying negative things about them is forbidden in Islam, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. I end it here, insha'Allah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have benefited much from this time, from this series. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better believers after this. I ask Allah to assist us in our good deeds. Brothers and sisters in Islam, tonight, tonight, Mend your contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tonight, seek the forgiveness of your Lord. Don't think, don't be afraid. Am I going to go back to my sin in the future? Don't think about that. The future only Allah knows. Now is what Allah is questioning you about. Now, not the future. Now, mend your contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the time comes when the soul will say, Oh my Lord, give me one more minute but Allah will not give it that minute. Mend the time now and you have the moment right up to when the soul reaches the gargling point here that you can mend and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servant, if you come to me with sins the size of mountains or the earth and you are not associating any partners with me, meaning you have repented to me, but you have not associated any partners with me, I will reward you by forgiving it all for you. Abadan. Even if it were like the foam of the sea. And Allah finally says, Tell my servants, inform them that I am the most merciful, the greatest forgiver. He also says, Say, O my servants who have regretted and blamed themselves and lost hope in my forgiveness and my mercy, do not turn away from Allah's forgiveness and mercy. He is the greatest, most merciful and the greatest forgiver. And lastly, Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers are truly successful. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The ones who are concentrating in their prayers and the ones who stay away from idle talk and the ones who pay their zakat and the ones who stay from sexual, forbidden sexual acts and the ones who monitor their five daily prayers and the ones who continue to keep their promises intact, for them, they will be the inheritors, the ones who will inherit the firdaus, the highest places of paradise. Repent to Allah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and do not give up on yourself or him. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم.